Welcome back to Craven Cottage then, as it's Fulham now, attacking the goal to our left, who get this second half away, Fulham leading by two goals to one. Here's Cutbush for them. Barrett. And now Mitchell. Getting his place in the side because of the transfer of Viv Busby to Norwich City. Here's Cutbush. Lindsay going with him, and he did well there, Cutbush, to get that in. But now Lindsay. Best beaten by Lindsay. Played inside for Terry Payne. Carter's made a break down the right. Here's Spiring. That has got a very heavy cold. Feeling a little under the weather. Oh, but strong enough to bring down Marsh. Referee coming across grim face towards Peter Spiring. And a free kick to Fulham. And here's Bobby Moore. Evanson. Long, long drive again. Oh, nearly knocked the head of a photographer there. Kept that down beautifully. A few bruises. I wonder if he got a shot of it. Tyler. Inspiring. Oh, a little dummy there. Oh, and he's... Nothing given. Well, I must say, that seemed a pretty harsh old decision to me. Look to me, that I've seen penalties given for fouls like that many, many times, and Hereford, inspiring in particular, a little bit aggrieved that they didn't get one there. Well, I think Fulham were very lucky indeed there. Best. Side for Marsh. Looking around, seeing who he can pick up. Decides to go on in. Oh my goodness, what a goal! Oh, what a tremendous goal by Marsh! Well, Hereford 
can only look stunned as Rodney Marsh does it again. Looking around to see who he can pick up, decides he's going to pick up the far corner of the Hereford net and hits it with tremendous power. 4-1. And Rodney Marsh is second. Two goals in a matter of three minutes for him. Now McNeil crossing it in again, spiring with the header just over the Fulham crossbar. And a goal kick. Spiring. Oh, this might come now. For Spiring, right through there, and a corner given. Terry Payne cruising across there. Some young supporters there in the corner. Looks like a teddy bear and all. Moore heading that one away. And now Marsh and Best are up. Best inside his own half. Marsh brought down. And Best on his way. Now he's got Tyler to beat. Oh, and in the end, Burroughs came up so quickly to dispossess him. And Marsh remonstrating with the referee that he was bowled over away in his own half. Crowd are booing. They didn't like the challenge on Marsh. They may not have liked the challenge on Best. But a corner is what Fulham have got. Just haven't got that little finishing whip over the last ten yards of that run, George Best. Well, they were very slow there. And this might come now for Ernie Howe. No! Slow, no! Well, again, Hereford were almost caught out by the speed with which Fulham take their free kicks. Or their corners in that case. Bobbing about there, and bobbing about some more, until Slough put it wide. And a fall for Marsh, killed in one movement. Finds John Evanson. Tremendous worker for Fulham in the middle of the field. Here's Marsh. Evanson, the sort of player who makes the right sort of balance for the rather extravagant skills from time to time of Roddy Marsh. And here's another great break by Fulham. It's strong going all the way in, and he hits the post. Very nearly number five. And a corner instead of a goal. A great smile there from uh, Les Strong. And no wonder after he uh, wriggled his way through, only to whack it against the post. And there is Steve Davy, the injured player who went off for Hereford with a cracked cheekbone. Pretty withdrawn in the second half. Now he's uh, adventuring forward. Plays it back for Cutbush. Good play by Slough. And a wonderful game. Mitchell played on again for Les Barrett. Mitchell again. Slough again. Oh, and he hit the crossbar when Charlton had given it up for lost. Great to see so many smiles here at Fulham, even though there's disappointment there. A really tremendous shot by Slough, beating the goalkeeper, and off the crossbar. Spiring. Strong and our best. Hurdle beautifully over Tyler. <laughs> Took it off Rodney Marsh. Marsh coming back to tackle him. Well, you can do that when you're 4 1 up. Here's Mitchell. Free kick right on the edge of the box, given away by Galley. Who's had a fairly rumbustious afternoon, this big number five of Hereford. Another smile. And they're cooking up something. Well, the goalie will want a clear view of this. You can take my word for it. Best and Marsh will be cooking up something. And it almost came off in an unexpected way. Robbed up by Best. 
hit by Marsh. In fact, there was a handball before it came to Ernie Howe. As it was lobbed up, it was handled, and a free kick. Either that or that it wasn't a fair free kick. The ball didn't go the full circumference. George Best and Fulham are worthy winners by four goals to one and in the second half you suspect it could have been six or seven there are so many smiles about the place at Craven Cottage and it's easy to see why people are delighted to come back here and enjoy themselves on a Saturday afternoon to watch the skills of players like Marsh and Best and the rest of the Fulham team as well they thoroughly deserve their win today and they've given a lot of pleasure to a lot of people as well the crowd are still standing there, applauding these two teams off the field. The final scoreline then at Craven Cottage, Fulham 4, Hereford 1. Well, you can see what I mean. A really breathtaking game, but of course it takes two sides to make a great game like that, and Hereford played their part as well. Worth adding to, of course, that Fulham are much more than a two- or three-man team, remembering the great work of players like Alan Slough and John Evanson, Les Strong, Johnny Cutbush, and in spite of their own goal, Ernie Howe. But there are two men, of course, they all come to see, Rodney Marsh and George Best. What was their reaction to it all? Yeah, it was uh, tremendous, great, you know, especially for the fans. And I think it was nice for Fulham and, you know, for ourselves that uh, the cameras were here as well. I think anyone going away after seeing that, they think either Rodney or I aren't serious about our football. You know, they, they've got to believe it now. Would you say the same, Rod? Well, from my point of view, I just really enjoyed the game. It's probably the most enjoyable game I've ever played in my life. Really? What yeah. made it that? Well, for a start, the crowd got behind us in the, in the second half, after we scored, scored the, um, the third goal, the header. And from then on, it just carried the game, just carried on in, on a sort of a crest of a wave. It was very great to play in. What was your game, though, tackling each other just before the end? <laughs> well, the question is, he's been ignoring me, you see, and he's, <laughs> with his passing. I keep passing to him, he doesn't pass back to me. <laughs> and the only way I could get off is to, to tackle him. Yeah. No, it's all, it's all good fun, Brian. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he was winning the game 4-1. It's a little bit of entertainment, I suppose. The thing I was saying earlier was there were so many smiles out there. Do you, I mean, you were obviously enjoying it. Do you think there's yeah. a, a, too much fun has gone out of the game overall in, in our leagues, Rod? Well, I haven't, I haven't changed my attitude towards the game since I've been playing. I always enjoy my football and I always uh, see the funny side of situations. You know, and I'll carry on doing that. But there aren't that many people like you. Well, I uh, don't know, because uh, today there was, everybody seemed to be enjoying it, you know. Even their side were enjoying it. And I don't think there was one dirty tackle in the whole of the game. I couldn't be sure about that. But there seems to be no really vicious tackling. I wish I could always see as many smiles on the Saturday afternoon. I mean, you see a hell of a lot of grim faces up and down the leagues, don't yeah. you? Yeah. Well, yeah it's all about entertainment, isn't it? I mean, that's, that's the whole thing. You know, you want, you want people to go away from the games happy. Do you get inspired by this fellow? Does he sort of G you up and make you pull out all the stops? Oh, yeah, we've got to, we try to, try to outdo each other. Truly, yeah, I mean, is there any sort of, sort of personal, I mean, in the pleasant way, a battle between you to try and outdo each other? Well, do you, do you... Not, no, not really. I mean, we... We go out have lunch together, go out and have a drink after the game together. And we talk about the game. You know, I think we both love it, both enjoy playing in it. 
And uh, I mean, if I don't care if Rodney scores three goals every week, and I don't score, as long as Phil. I, I, I was trying to make one for him at the end there. I, I, should, sure. I should have scored myself, but I tried to lay one on for him. It's the last time I do it as well. <laughs> <laughs> in the end, John Evans and I blasted over the That's top. Right, of yeah. 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 What do you feel about Fulham now, Rodney? I mean, it's a long time since you played for them. Um, do yeah. you feel that they're a side going places and a club going places? Well, to be honest with you, Brian, I think that um, Bobby Campbell is making a big difference to this club. He's, um, he's getting us organised, he's getting the team organised. And uh, we play a system, we play a 4-4-2 system that is very awkward to play in, particularly when we've got uh, the players that we have. And he's getting George and I to fill in the gaps, the spaces, when, we, when the attack breaks down, you know, which isn't easy to get two players that are committed totally to go forward to do this, you know, and I think he's getting us doing this. Mm -hmm. And I think Bobby Campbell's doing a tremendous job here. Well, you made the first goal, really, for, for Rodney, didn't you? The, uh, Rodney's first goal, the Fulham third one, although John Mitchell got up very well at the far post. Yeah, well, it was my, I think it was my third attempt to cross it with my left foot, so <laughs> I mean, sooner or later, one's got to be right. And John Mitchell got up very well, nodded across, and Rod nodded it in. Uh, but the Rod's second goal was the, you know. He missed it, I think, didn't he? Yeah, that's what the game's all about, seeing yeah. them going. Yeah. That was a beautiful goal, though. I was very pleased, yeah. I think it's um, a once-in-a-lifetime goal, actually, Brian. Played inside for Marsh. Looking around, seeing who he can pick up. Decides to go one in! Oh, my goodness, what a goal! Oh, what a tremendous goal by Marsh! You may try to do that 25, 30 times a season, you know. But when they go in like that, there's nothing you can say about it. Yeah, it's just, just brilliant. <laughs> 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 I tell you what, there have been smiles all afternoon. It's nice to finish on a big smile from Rodney and from George. And thank you for all the pleasure they've given everybody, if not to Hereford fans this afternoon. Thanks a lot. Pleasure.